Come on, Cap. Come on, buddy. We gotta get up. We gotta get up, okay? Come on. Come on. Come on. You're not even... Come on. We gotta go downstairs. We gotta... Yeah, okay. You yawn and... Come on. Come on. Oh, my God. I finally got them down here. You know how I did it? I came down here. Myself. And he followed just fine. He likes it upstairs. It's nice and warm, and he likes it. I was... I was dying a little bit. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to Tuesday. Uh, it was time to do another first 20 stream today, which is also going to be the subject of the vlog. I'll be talking about some games. Um, but being upstairs in the middle of July with the overhead fan off and the door closed, like I know when I'm going to stream, right? And I turn the AC on, uh, and, and, and lower the air a lot, um, well before I get started, so they'll try and cool the air, the, the room down up there. And uh, it's still not enough. It's still not enough. And I know that, that some people have said, you know, just leave the door open and put a fan at the bottom, but that doesn't help me in those particular instances because I have to have the, the door closed because Kepler will come up there and interrupt things badly. So, yeah, that the fan could help me most of the time, but when the door is open, things are generally pretty good. Well generally pretty good anyway, so it's just the little bits that I'm doing the streams solo that are a huge problem, so I probably won't run into this issue again for another month, because I did five games today. So we're going to talk about the games I played in July 2020, starting with Superliminal. Um, this is a game that I've been watching for a while. It originally came out uh, on PC back in November and it just launched on consoles in the last few days. And I was offered a dev key for Switch and I took it because I really wanted to try it out for myself. It's um, it's a puzzle game. The The key shtick of it is that when you, when you pick up an object um, and you move around the room, how you drop the object affects the size of the object. So I, I think how the game is interpreting it is when, when you pick up an object, it remembers the X, Y, and Z coordinates of that object. And then as you move around in space, holding that object, like when you let go, however, it is, however big it is in relation to that original space is how much larger the, or smaller in some cases, the, um, the object becomes. It's really cool. Like it's it's one of those things that you see it and you understand it immediately, um, and then seeing the level designs around it are just very very cool. Um, I really liked it. At some point, I I think that Mal and I will probably try and play through the entirety of it uh, on a stream just because it was really clever. Uh, the next game I played was actually uh, SpongeBob. Um, Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated, which is the remake of the game that came out however many years ago it was, some, somewhere between 15 and 20 years ago um, for the uh, the Xbox, PS2, and, and GameCube. Um, I don't know a whole lot about the history of the SpongeBob games, but there was a lot of them, I know, on GameCube. And of all of them, Battle for Bikini Bottom has long been uh, a fan favorite. Um, I never played it until today. But I got to tell you, I was pretty impressed. Like, when it comes to licensed games, they can be bad. They can be really bad. And uh, the, the trick to making a good licensed game is to stick very close to the source material. And in the case of something like a, like a television show, to make people, to make players feel as if they are experiencing, you know, an episode of their favorite show and they get to be a part of it. And the game does that extremely well. It does that because you are exploring the environments from the show. You're playing as the characters with the same voice actors, except for uh, except for Mr. Krabs. Everyone else, same. Mr. Krabs is different. Um, they, you know, it has lines that feel as if they were written by the writers of the show. I don't know if the writers were the same, but it certainly feels like that. Um, 
And uh, apparently the facial animations are new for this remaster. Apparently the facial animations weren't in the original, but um, they're, again, it just feels like the show. So would I recommend it to anyone who is just looking for a game to play and is not a fan of SpongeBob? No, <laughs> of course not. But is it a good licensed game? Is it a good SpongeBob game? Yeah. Yeah, it's actually quite good. I was very surprised. It is, of course, from that era of collect-a-thons. So it's one of those things where it's like, you know, got to collect all of this stuff and all of this stuff and all this stuff. Um, so you're, you're going to be collecting a lot of things. But if you don't mind that, and if you grew up with SpongeBob, you're probably from that same era of, you know, playing games in that era. So you, you probably like that anyway. Um, yeah, I would say to definitely check it out. Um, it's... Again, it was surprising, and that was also uh, that was also a dev key um, that I was uh, that I was sent. And I, and they, it was offered to me, and then I accepted it just because I was like, "That would be really different playing a SpongeBob game." We've definitely never done that in the first twenty. Uh, then we switched over and we played. Uh, oh, I remember we played. I think it's pronounced Verle Verle Swing. And the, the best way I can describe this is if Cluster Truck used a grappling hook. The idea is simple. You're in a 3D world. You have to get to the end of each level, and there's you know tons and tons of levels, and you can't touch the ground. So you've got this grappling hook, um, and you, you can do this. You're basically doing this swinging mechanic, and you can also control yourself. I was playing with a mouse and keyboard, so you can control yourself with WAST. So... You are swinging, but you also have some degree of control over how you swing. So, like, you can do not just, like, forward and back swings, but you can do side swings as well. But it's all about momentum. And once you start really get, you know, getting going, and once you have, like, a lot of speed, it just feels fun and incredible. And it has the exact same feel and appeal of Cluster Truck, where, you know, you're going to fail a level multiple times, but you're going to keep inching closer to figuring out exactly, you know, what it is you should be doing. Um, and it was, it was just really good. It was really good. One difference between this and Cluster Truck is that Cluster Truck does have a random element because the trucks don't always move the exact same way. Uh, there's some AI there, whereas uh, Verily Swing, from what I could tell, did not have that random element. That said, it didn't really... <laughs> Didn't really need it. Um, it was certainly challenging in its own right, especially uh, the very last level I played. I played through the first world, which was 20 levels, and that last one was a doozy. But it felt good to uh, to complete. Uh, after that, I moved over into a game called The Messenger. And The Messenger is... Um, it's kind of like a modern-day take on Ninja Gaiden, uh, although there's a lot of emphasis put on... Uh, comedy. And I was also told by chat and some other people that have played the game, um, and actually I was talking to Alex, and he was telling me about it tonight too, that uh, um, as you get further into the game, there's actually some other mechanics that you see um, apparently going between uh, like different time periods, and it actually changes like the look and play of the game, uh, kind of like between the NES and Super NES era. I didn't play far enough to get to that part, but I did enjoy what I played, and it did seem like a... Uh, you know, just a, a fun little retro romp. Uh, and How Long to Beat says it's about 12 hours long, which seems like a pretty good length for something like that. So I'm kind of hopeful that at some point, even if it's just in my own time, I'd get around to playing that because it seemed really fun. And then finally, um, because we were moving so quickly on, on all the games, I had time to do a fifth game tonight, and that was Aloris? Aloris, I think. Um, Aloris is a, uh, it's an adventure game. But it's, it's set up like a card game. So there's like a deck of cards that are leading you through all of the different options for the adventure. And every time you flip a card, you have one of two choices to make with every single card. So if it's a monster, your options are going to be to fight it or to run away. If it's, uh, you know, someone you're talking to, you can give option, you know, A or option B. So you're just constantly going through and exploring this world. Um, and actually it's set up to be very mobile friendly, which is probably good because it's also on Android and iOS. So you're just swiping left or right, depending on which option you want to you want to take. Um, it's pretty simple. I, I can't imagine that the game would be terribly, terribly long. 
Um, but it also has RPG elements. So you have health and you have gold and you level up, etc. Um, it seems it seems cute. It seems like something that I would probably advise people if they if they're interested in picking it up to get on mobile. It's, it's it seems like the the type of game that you could sit there and play for just a little bit and then pick up another time. Um, also, whenever I did my run, you know, I played for probably 15, 16 minutes. And then, you know, I, I actually, my character died. <laughs> so who knows how long an, a normal run is. Um, but I also made the very strange decision to try and hug a bear. So maybe that's why it didn't go so well for me. I guess that's a little bit of a spoiler for the first 20, but it's a pretty good first 20. I'd recommend it. And those are the games that I played. Uh, like I said at the beginning, um, dev keys for uh, SpongeBob as well as uh, Superliminal. And then uh, the rest of the keys were provided by uh, Jam and then also a key by uh, Shane Leaf. So thank you all for that. Really appreciate it. Um, the first 20 was really good today. Last month was fun, but because we did two RPGs in the stream, Outer Worlds and uh, Xenoblade, the stream was extremely long, and we only covered four games. Today, the stream was less time, and we covered more games. That's just really nice because, you know, when I get started on these streams, like obviously I haven't had dinner yet because I'm starting in the late afternoon, so if I can play, like, up until a normal stopping point for dinner would be, and then I can have dinner, um, it takes up, like, a, a very normal work block for me. Uh, whereas on the streams, on the first 20 streams I've done where it's like 10 or 11 p.m., by the time I get done, I'm starving, and that's really not the most ideal way of, you know, doing things. Hi. Welcome. Just walk in front of everything. That's, that's fine. You're gonna lay down. That's what he does. He's a good cat. Anyway. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the first 20 stream today if you, uh, if you caught it live. Otherwise, those will be coming out on YouTube uh, for the next five weeks. Some really, really good stuff. Just really, really good stuff. Superliminal is, is genuinely interesting um, and creative. Um, you know, I, I really liked the simple nature of Alorus. Uh, Messenger, um, I, real, I, I wish we could have played a little bit longer to find out, you know, some of the, the more detailed mechanics of Messenger. Um, but I wasn't sure exactly when all of that was going to take place. Um, you know, the Spongebob game was surprising for how good it was. And then I think my favorite game I played today uh, was Fairlay Swing. Just really, really liked that. And I liked Superliminal. I'd like to, you know, see what the rest of that is like. But as far as like a game that I think that I could just sit down and play um, and just kind of zone out, probably Fairlay Swing. It's really good. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, let's be back tomorrow, shall we?